I got up a little bit late, so I'm a little yes. bit sleepy, but I'm feeling good. Feeling oh, good. okay. That's good. <laughs> I woke up earlier this morning and just did Pilates, and um, I'm full of, of energy today. <laughs> oh, excellent. All right. So yeah, you, because... you've already done your exercises. Uh, sorry? You've already done your exercises. Yes, yes. Uh, ten minutes ago, I uh, I did a um, cool down to relax my muscles. About uh -huh. uh, ten minutes. Yes, more or less ten minutes. And today is a sunny morning, so I feel myself uh, better. <laughs> excellent, <Okay>. excellent. <laughs> better than the rain for sure, right? Yes, yes. Sometimes <laughs> the, the weather um, affect your mood. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Definitely. Definitely. And what about you? Well, well, I just got up. I just got up, so uh, I have not exercised yet. But it is nice here this morning. I, I looked outside, and the sun is just coming up, and it, it looks really pretty in the morning. And the weather so. is the weather is warm there. Yeah, yeah. I I went for a run yesterday after work. Yeah. And uh, I got a little bit red on my nose. Yes, yes, I can see your face, <laughs> a little red. <laughs> yeah, I went running for about an hour, and I think it was a little bit too much time in the sun. One hour? Yeah. Wow, what time did you run? Uh, short, shortly after after work, so maybe at about 3.30 or 4. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. You run a lot. Yeah, I try to. I try to. I, I need to stay in shape for my football team, for my soccer ah, team. Ah, yes. <laughs> when will you play again, football? Well, I'm supposed to play today, but uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm... I'm not feeling in very good shape, so I might just go <laughs> running again. <laughs> you train yourself. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Victor, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good, thanks. Good. Hey, hey, Victor, is is the chat not working for you? Uh, no, yeah. I couldn't load any of them. I couldn't load Colingo chat or Google Effect. Everything yeah. is uh, is not working. Yeah, me neither. But uh, Liliana, you said it's working for you, the chat. Yes, yes, I have. The, Are there many people in the chat? I can't see three, anybody. Three, three people. Huh. And, and Victor, you left and came back and it's not working, right? Yes, it's not working. It's working now? No, no, Hello? it's not working. Not working, okay. Mm, I'm not Hello? sure. Much. Hi, Tassin, I know you're there. I see you. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Excellent. It's Good to see you again, Tassin. Thanks. <laughs> How are things going? You're, you're in Pakistan, right? Yes. All right. Excellent. Well... Th thanks for coming today. How how is your week going? Uh, I have exams. Oh. What what are you studying? Electrical engineering. Electrical engineering. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, sounds complicated. Sounds difficult. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. Technical. Yeah, it's very technical. I'm sure. And Leah, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? I'm good, I'm good. Leah, what time is it there? It's 9 p.m. 9 p.m., okay. We're, we're 13 hours difference then. It's 8 a.m. here. Cool. You're having a good evening? Uh, yeah, so, so. Because I just <laughs> have an exam. Oh, really? How, how did you do? Uh, I don't know. Are you are you feeling confident? Are you feeling like, yeah, I did yeah, good. Yeah, but like, yeah, good, excellent. Just asking yeah. some questions. Yeah, I know. There's always a few questions where you think back and you go, oh no, I don't know if I answered that correctly. I, yeah. I need to go looking. You're looking through your book after, right? <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> Cool. Well, welcome to class, Leah. Thank you. And hey, Selma. Selma, Selma. Oh, Selma. hi, teacher. Yes, hi, teacher. Hi. <laughs> hi. How are you doing? 
Mm, good. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You, you having a good week? Mm, mm, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some parts are good. Some parts not so good. Yes, actually, a lot of bad news uh, in oh. this week. Yes. What's that? So, um, just adjusting the uh, real, uh, the actual actual situation. So, it's fine for me. Okay, okay. Well, uh, the adjustment period is always difficult. So, I'm I'm sure you'll do it. I'm sure you'll do it. Uh, yes, it's okay. And fun. Hi, hi, fun. There you are. All right. <laughs> No, I can't hear you. No, no microphone. <laughs> Sorry, oh, my daughter yeah. here. So. There you go. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you, you've got the whole family there today. Hey guys. <laughs> yeah, so I, so everybody want to say hello to teacher. All right, excellent. I like no, you. mommy, teacher. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Hi guys. Thank you. <laughs> and Servet, you made it. I'm glad. Yes, I'm surprised. Even though I'm five minutes late. I yeah, I don't know. Late. I was surprised too. People came slowly today. Maybe, Lazy. maybe my yeah. my classes are getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Turkish classes are getting bored. People maybe almost you, new countries. You think we, we, we've talked too much about Turkey? Well. I'm getting more and more excited. That's that's the problem. I read more about Turkey. I get more excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> All right, well, hey guys, today we have a lot to get through. Okay, um, for anybody, if there's anybody out in the in the Colingo chat in the lobby, I have no Colingo chat today. It's not working. Um, Servet, is yours working? No. No. Fun. No, me too. I tried to do add apps, but it doesn't work too. Okay, and and Selma, it's working for me. They are working Work. both of them. Yeah. Well, I think there's only a few people in the class it's working for. So, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to have to use the other chat today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're go we're going to have to use the blue chat because I can't see anything and I cannot open um, Colingo chat. Bit of a problem, but we'll deal with it. Um, if anybody sees any comments on the other chat from people in the lobby, can you just um, tell me what they are? If they sound if they sound interesting, Liliana, can I put you in in charge of that since since you, it's working for you? No, they just say hi. Okay, all right. Well, hi to everybody in the lobby. <laughs> cool. Well. Let's get going, guys, because we still have to finish the cultural part, and then I think we're going to have to go very quickly through history. Um, but I will give you, at the end, I will give you a, a link so you can, if you want to learn more in depth, you want to learn more information about the history, you can do that. We're, we're just going to go very quickly through the different times, I think. Okay. So, to start with, We're going to start with, oh, not that, not that. We are going to look at that, but not yet. We looked at whirling dervishes. Okay, let's look at everything so far. So we talked about the flag, right? The red stands for the Ottoman Empire and blood. The uh, the half moon and the, the star is a, a symbol of Islam. Okay. Talked about geography and how Turkey is a, a quite a big country, right? Lots of diversity, three times the size of in, of the United Kingdom, the UK, uh, and it has lots of nature, okay? as well as historical things, right? Lots of history as well. We looked at Istanbul, right? Talked about the Bosporus a Strait, right? a very big city, at least 15 million people. We decided, right? <laughs> um, we looked at Hagia Sophia. Uh, it used to be a mosque. It used to be a church. Then it was a mosque. Now it's a museum, but one of the the main sites uh, of of Istanbul. And uh, 
Yeah, very beautiful. Well, and decorated inside. Lots of decorations. Um, okay. Then we talked a little bit about tapestry and rugs within within Turkey and how they're famous worldwide and. Uh, Diff there's different kinds of rugs, right? We have a prayer rug here, and underneath we just have a floor rug, right? Uh, and we talked about that they're hand woven, so it's it's a quite quite an art piece, right? an art piece. Then we talked a little bit about Turkish baths or amams, right? And they're throughout the uh, the Arabic world as well, but they they came over, I think, to to Western countries um, from Turkey, so. They become known in English as Turkish baths uh, in the Western world. H is not silent. It's hamam. That's the hamam. Yeah. Hamam. Hamam. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sarvet. <laughs> this is jacuzzi too. Is what? Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi. <laughs> no. I, I think it's different because you don't actually uh, soak as much, right? You see the sinks beside yeah. the walls? Yeah, right here. If you can fit inside it, it's your jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> it's your bucket or basket. <laughs> there you go. If you can fit in the sink, it's a jacuzzi. All right. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. We talked a little bit about Turkish delight. Right, a, a famous dessert um, within within Turkey and the rest of the world, also known in in Turkish called lakum, right? Lakum. Oh, Turkish delight. Okay. Uh, then we we looked at. Uh, I think this is a famous um, vacation site for many people. Turkish and international people, uh, and this is it's known as the Blue Lagoon. It's the Blue Lagoon, I, I guess you would call it in English, but it's uh, Olu Oludeniz. Is that right, Sarvan? Yes, Oludeniz. It means like Dead Sea. It's because of the the sea is calm, no wave, uh, no yeah. wind. That's yeah. why they call it Oludeniz, like Sarvan. Dead Sea. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, have you ever been there? No. Is it far from Istanbul? No. No. <laughs> it's, okay. it's far. It was Istanbul. I would, I would be there every day. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody would be there every day. It might not be as beautiful now. <laughs> Daniel, can I ask you something to serve it? Yeah, yes. of course. I'm a little bit cur curious. What does uh, these two points uh, on the bubbles mean? Point on the. Oh, over top of yeah. right here? Over the bowls. Oh, over the all and what does Ah the even the letters. Yes. Yeah the letter. Uh, with that? Yes. Like you O O with that is U. Uh. Uh. U with that is U. Ah, uh, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, a, a different well, letter. How how do you pronounce the O without a dot? O. O. And with a dot? Uh. O. Uh. Like with dot as in bird. Without dot as in. Yeah, yeah, I think I understand. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. I. Okay. Charlotte? Yes. I, I want to know uh, is uh, this alphabet bats are like German language or different? I don't know the German language, but it's similar to normal English alphabet. We have a few more letters with dots, and we don't have like X and W. Oh, okay, but that that sounds a little bit similar then to the Germanic language because uh, English is a Germanic language, right? Is it maybe Tur Turkish as well as a Germanic language? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, are there any are there any other languages that it's close to, Servet? Azerbaijan is another dialect of Turkish, and Kazakhstan is also a Turkish, but it's very different. Oh, okay. It's very hard to understand. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, uh, uh, all, all, Turkish all countries. Stand, stand, yeah. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan. In Arabic, we have some similar words. Yeah. But not much. Okay. okay. Interesting. Uh, okay. So then we talked, guys, about the whirling dervishes, right? And we said this is a, an Islamic sect, uh, the Sufis. Right, if you know the Sufis, and I don't remember who is. Oh, I can't get this stupid screen to stay still. Uh, the, the Sufi sect um, is is known for um, say, saying uh, not accepting um, uh, what do you say material possessions. Okay, it's it's a, it's about living for for. Um, the, the spirit more than living for material possessions, right? So this is a, a celebration done by by the whirling dervishes, the Mevlevi order, okay? And very beautiful, very beautiful for sure. Like the colors of the dress. Yeah, the different colors. I like that too. I, I saw a few where they wear the same colors, Liliana, but I, I do like it when they all have different colors. I think uh -huh. that's cool. Yeah. Then we talked about this, Cappadocia, right? Uh, Servet, do you know what this, um, what the meaning this... of the buildings? Again? They call it Peri Bajalara, if you, if you mean the name of the buildings. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Peri Bajalara. Peri. Well, I believe it's a gap. Peri Bakalan? How do you pronounce Peri Bajalara. Peri Peri Bajalari. Sounds, yes. sounds Italian when I say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, it's it's pretty cool. Um, the history we, we said is um, it, it was founded by Christians who were escaping some kind of persecution um, and and lived in here and kind of hiding. But uh, it, it's pretty interesting. Were the first uh, invaders in Turkey? The first invaders. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, all right, so that's what we talked about. We're going to move a little bit quick today, guys, because we I want to get to history, okay? So does anybody know what this is? No. Monuments? What is that, Liliana? No, no. No. <laughs> okay, good. This is the ruins of Ephesus. I think this is the library of Ephesus here. Is that the library or something? Uh, do you know this city, this place, Tish? Servet or me? Yes. I don't know. I've do never you, been. You, Tish. Jewish? You mean? No. They're, I think they are. Uh, they are from Greek. Yeah, yeah. This is this is from uh, old, old Roman, actually. Yeah, old Roman. From, from the Roman period, right? So this was actually one of the seven wonders of the world. One of the ancient seven wonders of the world, right? They've got modern seven wonders and ancient seven wonders. This is one of the modern seven wonders of the world, or the ancient seven wonders of the world. I, I don't remember all of them. I remember the hanging. Hanging Gardens of Babylon was one. Mm -hmm. um, the, the pyramids were definitely one. Yeah. I can't remember the other seven ancient. Uh, the Faro. Uh, the Sphinx. Faro. <laughs> Faro. Oh. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, anyways, let, let's let's do a little bit of reading about this. So, reading about the ruins of Ephesus. Okay. So, Edwin, can you read the first paragraph for us? Oh, Edwin, are you there? Okay, uh, Leah, I'm gonna, I'm, I am gonna get you to read. But Leah, I see your question there. I just noticed it. You're asking, where is Turkey? Is Turkey a part of Greece? Well, don't say that to Servet. Don't say that to Servet. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, Turkey and Greece actually have uh, a lot of common history, but whenever you have a neighbor with with common history, you always have kind of a, a rivalry, right? So, so uh, Greece and Turkey have had some 
some confrontations in the past, right? Um, but I'm just going to show you really quickly uh, a map. Can you hear me, Leah? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, okay good. I'm just going to show you a map. Uh, oh, not this one. This one right here, just to remind you where Turkey is. Okay. Turkey is the bridge, right? Turkey is the bridge between Asia and Europe. Okay, so if you see here, uh, just zoom in a little bit. Okay, this right here is where Istanbul is. Okay, right here, and this side of Istanbul is Europe, and this side of Istanbul is Asia. Okay, and you can see Greece is right here. We have all these little islands in the middle and they're kind of, some of them are Turkish islands, some of them are Greek islands. So there's a lot of similar ways of living. Okay? Lots of similar culture. Lots of similar food for sure, right? I, I know uh, the Greeks take take claim to, to lots of different kinds of food and then Turks will say, no, 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 we, we invented that kind of food, right? Right? There, there's there's always kind of a rivalry over who invented what kind of food. Just it's kind of like uh, Chile and and Peru are always fighting over ceviche and, and pisco and you know. Actually, it's not uh, it's not none of them. <laughs> it's kind of, for example, that kind of dessert called baklava. I think it's it comes from Halep, part of Syria. Mm. None of them, but <laughs> they think Turkey says it's mine. Greek Greece says it's mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I love that. Yeah, how do you pronounce it? Baklava. Yes, baklava. Yeah, yeah. No, it's delicious. Really sweet. I can only eat maybe two of them, but uh, I, I every time I see them, I want one. It depends and, on the places. Some places put a lot of sugar, but as a place in Istanbul is so famous. I just I like only it's baklava. Okay. Well, when I come to Turkey, I'm asking you. Uh, I'm asking you about that place because I'm interested. Yep. <laughs> so, Sherwood? Yep. Sherwood? Uh, is there a, any part in uh, Kur uh, Kurdistan or it, it is in Turkey or it is in other region? Is uh, There is no part like Kurdistan. There is an ethnic group, just ethnic group. And, uh, East of the Turkey and north of the Iraq. They right, have, right in this area right here. Yes. Okay. Uh, a, little bit into, a little bit into Iran as well, is that that's right? Iran, I don't know, maybe. I'm not sure. Iran. I, I believe so. I believe that there there's also Kurds in Iran as well. So it's this kind of this corner up here. Yeah. yeah. In uh, north of the Iraq they say they like if you ask them where are you from, they say like Kurdistan. Yeah. But there's no country called Kurdistan. Yeah, there's not. Uh, you know, there are, like maybe they are trying to build up a new country or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Okay, is Turkey bigger than Greece? Yes, Victor. Turkey is much bigger than Greece, actually. Yeah, much bigger land area than Greece. Of course. Uh, okay, so we're going to continue, guys, because we're going to run out of time. I, I just realized it, but we're, we're going to try and go quickly. I do want to talk about the history. So, um, sorry, Ed, Edwin, are you there? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Edwin, can you read, starting with the ruins of Ephesus, can you read the first paragraph? Ephesus? Yeah. Ephesus was an ancient Greek city and later a major Roman city on the west coast of Asia Minor, near present-day Salkut, Smith province, Turk, Turkey, Turkey. In the Roman period, Ephesus had a pro population of more than um, 250,000 250, in the first century BC. Which also, which also made it of the buried cities in the Mediterranean world. Good. Yes. And it says it, it made it one of the largest cities in the Mediterranean world. Well, in the first century BC, the Mediterranean world was one of the, the more populated areas in the world. So 
I would say that it was one of the largest cities in the world right, at that point. Uh, okay, continuing on, continuing on. Uh, Leah, can you start there? Yeah, the city was home for the Temple of Artemis, completed around 1250 years of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Emperor Constantine I rebuilt much of the city and erected new public parts. The town was partially destroyed by an earthquake in 614 AD. The city's importance... Oh, hello, can you hear me? It doesn't send uh, mute, Leah. Yeah? Don't, uh, oh. Send, don't, oh. Don't. Hassan, are you muting hello? people? Yes. No. I Hello. was not listening. I was not listening. Voice of Leah. Okay. So can you can you continue, Leah? Okay. The city's importance as a commercial center declined as the harbor was slowly sold up by the Kaiser River. Oh, good. Okay, good. I, I want you to pay, pay special attention to Emperor Constantine the First. He rebuilt much of the city. Okay. Emperor Constantine the first is actually uh, quite a big figure in, in Turkish history or, or the area that is Turkey. Okay. I think I think we really talk about it as being Turkey once the Ottoman Empire comes in. Is is that correct, Servet, when you talk about Turkish history? Is the Ottoman Empire kind of the when when Turkish identity starts? Yeah, Ottoman Empire is the like the history of the Turkey. Just is Turkey when they built after like a war. They yeah. Put it, like, and the, I can translate it in Turkey. Just a, a kind of war. They established uh, like republic, Turkish republic. Then they made it into like Turkish republic. Then just name changed. Okay. Okay. So when you're studying when you're studying um, history in schools, mm -hmm. uh, Sarvet, do, do you talk about um, the the Roman Ottoman. Empire quite a bit? Yes, there are lots of roles: Ottoman Empire, Romans, Russians, yeah. lots of okay. things. Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, Leah is asking, "What is AD?" Can anybody tell Leah what does AD mean? Uh, before Christ. It a AD, yeah, thank you, Victor. It means Anno Domini. It's a, a Latin word, but actually the way people remember it is after death, right? And BC, they remember as before Christ. Ah, uh, because okay. in, in uh, Colombia it, we said before or after, after death? Af after death, because it's talking about... Um, I, I'm not sure where it came from. I think it came from from Christianity talking about um, Jesus and when he when he was born and when he was died. But it, it, it's it's around that time. So when when the the um, the, the calendars were, were created, uh, the Roman calendar, they based it on the the around the time of the death of Jesus and uh, BC is before. Jesus before Christ. So it sounds like we are living in heaven yeah. for six hundred and fourteen <laughs> after death we dead and we are in heaven. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. So that's Ephesus guys and, and it looks really cool. Looks really cool. Would definitely like to see that. I can understand why it was one of the seven wonders of the world. Ah yes, I, I found it. The seven wonders is Machu Picchu, Tang Mahal. Uh, uh, Ah, State. but th those are the modern ones. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they actually had seven ancient ones and there are seven modern ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, next thing, guys. The Grand Bazaar. The Grand Bazaar. Okay. I know the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. Yeah, I think the Grand Bazaar is quite famous around the world, right? Oops. The Grand Bazaar. Um, okay, so looking at the Grand Bazaar, Liliana, can you read that for us? Uh, okay, 
uh, Grand Bazaar in Istanbul is one of the largest and oldest covered markets in the world with 61 covered streets and over 3,000 shops which attract between 2,000 and 250? Uh, 250,000 and uh, 400,000 visitors daily. Yeah, that's pretty incredible, those numbers, eh? Imagine, mm -hmm. 400,000 people coming in one day. That's, uh, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of shopping. Um, but the, yeah, the Grand Bazaar is quite famous, right? Quite famous around the world as a, as a, a, a shopping... Uh, a shopping site, like a, a famous shopping site with lots of uh, modern things and lots of traditional things. You know, you, know, you, you mentioned Turkish delight. Yeah. Uh, Rex, usually in this place you you find you find this type of things a lot, and it's very uh, crowded. You can walk inside it without uh, and, and without you, hitting other people, like crashing or. <laughs> sure. More kilos there. Tasted of the Turkish delight. <laughs> hey, Servet, that's a lot of people. Are there? There must be pickpockets and things in there a little bit as well, no? Yes, that's what I was talking. It's very crowded. You cannot walk. Yeah, it's very hard to walk. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay, moving on. Does anybody know what this is? No. Okay. This is Mount Nimrud. Mount Nimrud. Uh, so, reading about Mount Nimrud. Sorry, we're going fast now, guys, because I definitely want to get to the history. Selma, can you read that? Nimrud is, oh. is that... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry Tassina, mm. I'm going to get Selma to read that. Okay. Selma, can you read that for us? Mm, okay. Namrut is a 2,000, uh, 134 meter, uh, 701 feet high mountain, a mountain in southeastern Turkey. Uh, notable for the summit where a number of large statues are re erected around it is assumed to be a royal town from the first century before Christ. Okay, good. So, this this mountain is famous because it has all these very large heads on it. Okay, very large heads. And so they've assumed that what these heads are is they're a grave. Okay, it's a tomb for for somebody who is a very famous, right? Somebody who's very famous, and they're they're kind of a a memorial, right? A way to remember a gravestone almost, but. A very, a very big gravestone. So it's pretty cool. Definitely something to see. Uh, all right. I just put this in here because we, we've all probably heard of the site of Troy, right? An old, an old uh, Greek, Greek history, right? Troy. Yes. A large battle in Troy. The war. <laughs> yeah, the, the large war in Troy. Yeah. Uh, can you read that for us, Servet? Yes. Troy, with its 2,000 years of history, is one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. The first excavations at the sites were undertaken by the famous archaeologist Henrik Scheilman in 1870. In scientific terms, it's a Extensive remains are the most significant demonstration of the first contact between the civilization of Anatolia and the Mediterranean world. Moreover, the siege of Troy by Spartan and Aegean varies from Greece in the 13th or 12th. 12th century BC, immortalized by Homer in the light. Iliad. Iliad? Iliad, yeah. Iliad. 
has inspired great creative artists throughout the world ever since. Good. So speaking of, of the Battle of Troy, right? If anybody's ever read um, the Iliad, this is this is a, a famous a famous uh, ancient um, I guess it's almost a novel. It's a story by Homer, right? A great uh, philosophist uh, from way back when, and story writer, right? So the Iliad is quite famous. The Iliad and the Odysseus. And, yeah, good. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. Moving on. I just wanted to show one more here. Can anybody tell me what is this? Yes, it's shisha. Sure, we say shisha in in shisha. Arabic. I think oh. shisha. Yeah, no, no, you're right. But I, I, whenever I whenever I um, see it, I always say shisha, and and I, you call the pipe a hookah, right? But uh, okay. Um, but in in Turkish, it has a different word. Well, how do we say this in Turkish, Servet? Nargile. Nargile, right? You have nargile bars all over Turkey, I think. And uh, from from the people I know who spent some time in nargile, it's kind of it's a very social place to be, right? It's it's um, where people play uh, play backgammon and smoke nargile. That's what I've heard. Is that true? Yes, the play. The name of the uh, game I don't know, but I can anticipate. What do you mean? Uh, there is a place called it's very famous near near sea, and like near Dolmabahce place, and this Eminönü where is this Hagia Sophia? Like a very similar place, uh, very close. They yeah, are very close, and this dessert, this place that sells dessert. Uh, there it's called what was it called? Top, 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 top. Anyways, uh, there is a specific place, Topane, Topane, Topane. Yes, Topane. Okay. Okay. Uh, in this place, it's near Hagia Sophia. This Hagia Sophia is very close. And, uh, there, there are lots of these places, this type of cafes that sells nargile, shisha, and you can drink something that play that game. Like, is is it shesh sheshbesh? Yes, yeah, Shashbesh is the name of the venue. The game? Throw yeah. The, the dice. Dice, yes. Yeah. Dice. Shashbesh, it means if it comes, I think it, if it comes, double five, they call it Shashbesh. I don't know, it's Kurdish, actually. the. Oh, really? Yeah, it's Kurdish. They call it Shashbesh, or these names are totally Kurdish. Kurdish. Oh, you, you know, in, in English, we call it backgammon. Back mm. Yes, back down. Yeah, but uh, one of my favorite things to do is is sit down with a friend and and smoke shisha and uh, and play backgammon. I love it. S smoke mm. nagile and uh, and play backgammon or sheshbesh. Yeah. Cool. But the name of the game is not sheshbesh. It's when you have the name of the game is taula. Taula. Okay. Okay. Ah, interesting. Interesting. It's a world cool. dice as you can shash bash comes five or six. I don't know it's good. What, when you have doubles. Doubles. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, excellent guys. Um, so there you go. If if nobody's ever seen a, a Nagule bar before, that's uh, you'll have lots of pipes like that, right? It's a, a sweet tobacco you smoke, right? Sweet tobacco with many many different flavors. Uh, and it's not like smoking a cigarette or something. It it doesn't feel uh, after after you smoke it. The taste isn't isn't gross. It's a nice taste in your mouth. Especially the shish uh, taste. Which which taste? Uh, the shish. Ch it's cherries. Cher cherries. Yes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that your favorite flavor? Yes, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We have a um, to be here. <laughs> I, I, re I really like grape. Grape might be my favorite flavor. <laughs> um, Leah, I'm not sure why you can't see backgammon on there. It should be. It's the same as tabla. So see if you can find it looking up for tabla. Or sheshbesh, uh, I, I know. is. I, I think the word sheshbesh is used um, in a lot of uh, Middle Eastern countries. 
I think I think throughout uh, many... with the same name Bangamun in Colombia we know the same name what, what do you say Liliana in South America we always no. say backgammon the backgammon okay okay mm. Um, okay, sorry guys, we only have 18 minutes for history, so we're going to go so fast. We're going to go so fast. No, Leah, it's not a kind of fruit. It's not a it's kind a of game. fruit. Back down, it's a game. It's a game, game using using dice where you throw dice, right, with six sides. You move pieces around. Do you know how to play it, Sebastian? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an expert was, on that. <laughs> when, when I was a kid, I played all the time with my dad. Yeah. I'm a... Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a little bit of a professional. Wow. <laughs> I was gonna say if you come to Turkey we will play no I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I'm not a professional but I, I really do enjoy it. I have a lot of fun. I could I could spend a whole afternoon doing that. <laughs> uh, okay, guys we're gonna go very quickly looking at the history of Turkey. So I think we're going to cover all of the periods of time, but we're not going to go too much into depth here. We're not going to um, talk about too much because we just don't have time. We just don't have time. So looking at the history of Turkey. Uh, Tassin, can you start with the first, the first paragraph? Tassin, are you there? Oh, we've lost him now. Okay, no problem. We'll come back to you. Uh, Victor. Can you read the history of Turkey? Oh, have we lost everybody? Is there anybody uh, there? Oh, no, there you are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm here. Okay. Uh, okay. History of Turkey. Perfect. The Anatolia Peninsula, comprising most of modern Turkey, is one of the oldest permanently settled regions in the world. The first major empire in the area was founded by the Hittites, Hittites, Hittites. Hittites from the Hittites. 18th. Yeah. Hittites. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no! Oh my goodness! Turkish and English Hittitler. We call it Hittitler. Uh, Instead you, of you Turkish polar suffix, I I started using English suffix. Servet <laughs> <laughs> speaks more English than Turkish now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From the 18th to the the 13th century BC. Okay, good. Anatolia. No, one one second here. One second. I I want to show you. You guys, we have the word Anatolia there. Anatolia, and we okay, talked about this. Last class, but the Anatolia, the Anatolian Peninsula, okay, when we talk about that, we're talking about the, the largest part of Turkey, okay, we're talking about the, the Asian part of Turkey, okay, right, we said it, it divides Asia and Europe, and the European section of Turkey is very small, and the Asian section is very big, so when we talk about Anatolia, we're talking about the Asian section, okay, so that's all of this area. From, from right here, from this side of Istanbul, all this side of Istanbul, okay? The Anatolian Peninsula. I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, who were the Hittites? Hittites? Who were Hittites? Yes. They were Hittites. It's a in name of the country, like, there were lots of countries. I don't know what they did, what they... Exactly, I don't remember the history. Well, they, they that were, one they, of the countries that that's located in that area before before Turkish uh, empires or Turkish Ottoman. Uh -huh. No, another country, completely yeah. different countries. Because you know, Turkey, uh, we come from Asia, like nomads. No, like we immigrated. Yeah, yeah, immigrated yeah. from Asia. Yeah. Yes, okay, it was the above China, I think. I call it Mongolia, the place where you know Mongolia. Mongolia, yeah. Yes, they say Turkish people came from Mongolia, mm -hmm. and in the history, first of uh, before us, there were lots of little countries, little things. 
Yeah, if, if you look at this, Liliana, we're talking about the 18th through the 13th century BC. We're talking about almost 4,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's right? interesting to know who, who were them. Yeah, I think it's difficult to look at peoples and, and, and really understand it because it's so it's so long ago that um, I think it would be interesting to kind of do a little bit of study about the Hittites. Mm -hmm. Learn a little bit, yeah. Uh, sorry, we're going to continue. Uh, Victor, can you continue? Anatolia was conquered by the, by the Persian Achaemenid Empire during the 6th and the 5th centuries BC and later fell into Alexander the Great in 334 BC. Following Alexander's death in 323 BC, Anatolia was subsequently divided into a number of small kingdoms, all of which became part of the Roman Republic by the mid-first century BC. Good. So this is interesting. Does anybody know anything about Alexander the Great? Yeah. Yes. yes. He's a Macedonian. Macedonia, right. So looking back, looking back at our map, Alexander the Great came from Macedonia. So I'm just going to try to go back here. We'll look at the map again. Okay. So that's over. He came from kind of northern, the northern Greece area. Okay. Uh, his father was uh, Phil Philip, Philip the Conqueror, I think, and he had started to expand the Greek, um, the Greek Empire, right? The Greek Empire, and and kind of went all the way over here, and I think, all the way into across into India as well. That's how far he went. Okay, Alexander the Great really conquered a large part of the world. Okay, but then as soon as he died. He didn't leave it to anybody, so it was a very short thing. Alexander the Great did major battles, conquered many people with his armies, and then after he died, it was, that was it. He kind of left everything, right? And so after he died and left everything, a lot, a lot of small uh, groups started started coming up everywhere. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember back to my history, but I, uh, yeah, I haven't studied Alexander the Great for about 15 years. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So very quickly now, we're going to go through the history of Turkey, and we might get some discussion questions here, um, but we're going to look very quick. So we don't have a lot more reading. Does anybody know who this guy is? Anyone? <laughs> okay, no problem. Constantinople. Okay, we're talking about Constantinople. So this is Emperor Constantine, right? Talking about Constantinople. This is Emperor Constantine. And does anybody know what Emperor Constantine did? Uh, he burned Rome. Ah, yes, he, that is true. He did burn down Rome, yes. Do you know why he burnt down Rome, Victor? Uh, I don't remember, but... I think uh, he was crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was a little bit crazy. I think most of those, the, the Roman emperors were a little bit nuts. Yeah. But he, Constant, he, he also, Constantine also founded um, Byzantium or Constantinople. It later became Constantinople. But I believe, and from what I've read, there's not absolute proof that he called it New Rome. Okay. Okay. Sorry, can I get, I'll get somebody just to read that bottom part there. Edwin, can you read that for us? No, nope, we don't have Edwin there. Leah, can you read that? Yeah, Constantine, the ruler of the Eastern Roman Empire, also called Byzantium, forms New Rome. It later becomes Constantinople. Good. So we're talking about 330 here, right? So this is, um, that's AD, that's AD, 330, right? So this is sometime um, towards the end, sometimes towards the end of the Roman Empire, okay? okay? So in case you're wondering why it was called Constantinople, and does everybody know what we're talking about when we talk about Constantinople? 
you Istanbul. Istanbul. <laughs> Istanbul, right? Yeah, <laughs> the old name for for Istanbul, also known as Byzantium, and also known possibly as New Rome. Right? It's changed names a few times, but it's it's been a um, a large um, important city in the region for for hundreds, thousands of years. Okay. You know, teacher, I live in Constantine, but I have never knew that Constantine is the ruler, I mean, name of person. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you learned something. <laughs> Perfect. I thought it, right. it was a place in Spain, but I didn't know about that before. Constantine was a place in Spain. Uh, yes, I th this is what I uh, thought before. Ah, very interesting. So, wh where where is Constantine, Salma? Uh, it is in the east of Algeria. In the east of Algeria. Wow. So, so mm. I guess I, the the Roman Empire was quite big, so it would have touched all the way down there as well. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I think I think the Roman Empire touched most of the borders of the Mediterranean. Right. Uh, okay, Servet, do you know who this guy is? No. Okay. Can I no. guess? I want a picture, but I don't remember the name. Can I guess? Sure, Victor. Uh, Suleiman the Magnificent. Ah, uh, no. Good, good try. Good try. No. Good guess, though. <laughs> We're looking at Osman Bey. Osman Bey. And who is Osman? Does anybody know? King of uh, Turkey. He, he was, was the actually. He founder of the uh, Ottoman Empire. Exactly. Uh, Thank you, Victor. The founder of the Ottoman Empire. Okay. Uh, Liliana, can you read that for us? Okay. The so Ottoman in Turkish means Osmanlı. The same ah. name. Oh, so that's why Osman comes from that. Ottoman? It's yeah. Osman. Okay. Yes, okay. in Turkish, Osmanlı. Ah, well, that makes sense. Okay, Liliana? Osman, a warrior chieftain founds the Ottoman Empire. Good. So look at the year there, the year there, 1288. So we're talking much later. This is the start of the Ottoman Empire. Okay? And it, we say, it says, founds the Ottoman Empire. I don't know if that's correct. The empire, when, when we say the word empire, what do we mean? What does empire mean? Castles, uh, king, gardens. Sure, but, but it is a lot of, it's a lot of space and a lot of power, right? I can't say, well, I live in, I'm the, I'm the king of my house, so my house is an empire. Right? I can't say that. Right? It needs to be a large space, lots of people underneath you. So when it says he founds the Ottoman Empire, well, he didn't have a lot of land um, under his control and didn't have a lot of people under his control. But it was the start. It was the start of the empire. Yes. Okay. Um, somebody who made the empire much bigger, we will talk about in a second, but looking at the empire expanding. Okay, so... Uh, Servet talked before in, in last class that there's a lot of uh, a lot of war and and blood shed on in in Turkish history. Uh, this was a period where there was lots of blood shed, right? When you're expanding an empire. So we have this guy right here. Does anybody know who this is? No. Any guesses? Maybe the guy who was uh, Victor talking about the man. I mean. One of the kings of uh, Turkey. There you go. This is one of the sultans. Okay. This is one of the sultans. Okay. Uh, sultans. Mm -hmm. So, the the, the name of a a, a a a Turkish king, I guess, would be a sultan, right? Mm -hmm. Sultan. Sultan. Fatih Sultan Mehmet. Okay. Yeah. And very famous um, in in Turkish history because he expanded the Ottoman Empire. Okay. Selma, can you read that for us? Uh, 1453, Sultan, uh, Sultan Mohammed II conquers uh, Constant, uh, Constantinople, 
no, uh, Constantinople and extends uh, Ottoman control. The powerful empire lasts 600 years. Yeah, so 600 years for one empire. That's, um, that's pretty incredible. There aren't many empires in the history of the world that have lasted 600 years. Okay, So 1453 is a very important date in Turkish history because this is when uh, Constantinople was, was taken and this really solidified uh, what the Ottoman Empire became. Okay? And, and this is um, quite an important date, I guess, even in modern um, Turkish history. Okay? It's a lot of, a lot of identity with, with the Ottoman Empire, right? So right here we have a map of how far the Ottoman Empire stretched when it, when it became quite big, and it's huge. Okay? You see it goes all the way into Algeria, right? Large parts of Algeria as well. Um, yes. Yeah. So the Ottoman Empire was quite big. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about Egypt on Friday. It, it, uh, it, most of Egypt as well. Oh, uh, and then? After Egypt? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> Liliana, I still haven't got you the list, have I? After Egypt, we'll talk about Mexico. I am still waiting for that. Uh, Egypt, Mexico, Brazil, France, Vietnam, China, Colombia. Those are the next few. Okay. The Egypt, next few. Mexico, Vietnam. Uh -huh. Mexico will be after Egypt, though, yeah. Um, okay, so, sorry, continuing on, we see how far it went there. Uh, so, talking about Suleiman. Suleiman. Uh, Servet, can you read that for us? Fatih Sultan Süleyman, Birinci Fatih Sultan Süleyman, expands the empire and builds mosques and monuments. Good. So, Victor, you asked, is he the grandfather of Süleyman? I think he might be, actually. Do, do you know, Sarabat? Is Sultan Mehmed II, is he the grandfather of Süleyman? No, I'm not sure. No. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. He's either the grandfather or the great-grandfather. One of the two. Good question, though. Okay. Does anybody know who this guy is? Very important in Turkish history. Very important. Servet. Who, who is this guy, Servet? Atatürk. Atatürk. Yeah. So Atatürk is this is this is when modern Turkey was really founded. Okay. So uh, can. can